Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I wanted to start a little mini series um, sort of outlining some different techniques and things that I do um, on a regular basis with my travel sketchbook and yeah just because I think it might be beneficial um, for people watching and it might be something that people are really curious about. So my first uh, one I'm going to talk about is uh, bricks actually because that's something that I come back to again and again in um, my travel sketchbook. I really like capturing the look of brick and I think that it can be one of these things that's a bit daunting because you're like oh I have to put so much detail in um, but really it can just be a fun and uh, kind of cool looking technique that's not actually that difficult to accomplish. I've got a few different methods that I've used to create brick. Um, but yeah, I was just going to take you through a couple of the techniques that I use um, or have used. So we'll start off with doing a little quick sketch here. So then in terms of doing the brick, um, because it's generally sort of a supporting texture, um, you know, it's not really the focus ever of any drawing. You want it to be, um, or at least I want it to be a little less sort of, I don't want it to take too much of your attention. So I just kind of put a couple strokes in and around. Um, the piece and then focus more on the focal points which would be in my opinion you know the window uh, these sort of cornerstones um, I'm m more curious about than the brick so I'm putting a bit more time and effort into these little bits um, and then the brick is just going to make everything pop and stand out. Yeah, that would be basically all I would do for the basic sketch. Um, I guess I need to do the background bit there. This window's open a little bit, so. Um, yeah, so then I would go in with my pen and make some final decisions about things. And then I want to add these little bricks and, you know, bricks have Bricks have this sort of like mismatched way that they're stacked, right? Um, so you just have to make sure that you're kind of giving that stacked appearance. Uh, and you know, they're not really so exact as that. Some of them are a bit smaller, some of them, you know. But the point of this is not to be necessarily picture realistic, it's to get the point across that these are bricks. So this first layer of doing bricks is just that. It's the first layer, so you don't have to worry about it being like looking super brick-like yet. Um, I add in a couple strokes to kind of give a little bit of definition, um, but you know, you can't really tell that that is supposed to be brick. Um, and you won't be able to really until um, I start getting some color down. And I've done a workshop recently. I've just started doing workshops. And one of the things that I was telling 
the people attending the workshop was that, you know, your thing is going to look really, you know, uncomfortable and not right until you start getting color down. So you kind of have to get used to that uncomfortable moment of making art where you're like, ooh, I don't like this, but you learn as you go that you know the next step, you will like it. So you just kind of endure the discomfort. So when I'm doing sketchbook pages, I leave. I like to leave some of my lines just because I like that sketchy texture, so I do that. And then let's head on to the color here. So I'm gonna start off um, with the base color, which it's not super accurate because I, a lot of brick has like a lighter mortar in between the actual bricks. And I'm not really emphasizing that ever. Um, yeah, it's just not something that I have the patience to do all these little lines, all this stuff. So I choose to focus on the darker color. So I'm going to get a bit of this kind of reddish, brownish color going here um, and start with that as my under layer. Um, you may or may not know this, but with watercolor, it's always a good idea to start with a lighter wash and then build up from that because you can't really go backwards and then it can start looking a little muddy when you um, put too many intense colors on top of each other. So you wanna start with a light wash and then you'll build the intensity. So we'll start there. I'll get a couple of these other surrounding colors in just to give us an idea of what it looks like. And then for the sake of time, I'm just gonna take my blow dryer and dry this so that we can continue on. All right, so obviously you're not gonna have the luxury of a hairdryer when you're on location travel sketching, but it's something that I've uh, saw in another video recently and I thought, you know, in my own studio, when I'm at my own desk, it's just kind of a nice thing to be able to move on quickly. So, all right, so we've got this base layer down. Um, now it's time to add some different dimension to the brick. Um, so if you've ever looked at brick, you kind of know it's a little bit of a different color. Every brick is slightly different. So of course we're not going to go in and do every brick because that's a lot of work. There are a lot of bricks that are similar tone, so we leave a lot of space just kind of as is. But you can go in just with like your paintbrush here and just kind of pick out a few spots that are going to be a little bit different. And again, you want to continue with that sort of staggered look that bricks have um, to give yourself that that look. Um, and then you can add a little bit more brown in, make it a little bit darker. Um, so I just use the end of my brush to get the squared off ends and sometimes it makes it a little bit rounder, sometimes it's a whatever, it doesn't really matter. Kind of do it however you like. I do think that if you use the end of your brush it keeps things consistent, which I like. Um, so that you don't have a lot of different sized bricks. But even that's not really the case. So. And then we wait for this layer to dry. And then we go in with another layer of color. This is a little bit different. Sometimes it's important to look at the direction that bricks are going to it's around windows. Um, bricks can sometimes be fanned outwards and up. Um, this particular one didn't have that. It had uh, kind of a lintel stone that is of a different um, composition than the brick, so I didn't do that with this one, but you can see that with some of my other ones. Um, 
And then I'm going to leave it there for now as I finish up everything else in the little sketch. So now I'm going to go in and add a little bit of the shadow. Um, the shadow underneath the roof line. I don't want to I don't want to put the shadow color color over the other brick. Oh, it goes down to over the other bricks, so I'm just going to leave that, but there's a little bit of shadow under here. end up erasing some of this work here but you can still see it so um yeah like I said layering is good adds a lot of depth to it and then add a little bit more in here as well bit more back in of these bricks, um, defined bricks up here, just to kind of re-emphasize them. I'm going to bring some of that color down into here too. Add a little bit more shadow down here. So there you go, that's that one done. I'm going to do another little section of brick. With this other one, there's a little bit more focus on it. So this is gonna be a bit um, of larger bricks, I guess. And I like to, when they're a little bit more in focus, kind of instead of doing just, you know, the straight lines, I like to give them a little bit more definition just in you know still kind of like a random assortment of them because I don't want to take too much time with it and I don't want too much focus to be on the brick but just kind of put it in places randomly randomly but you also don't want I don't know you, you don't want to leave too much space in between them either because they are you know, taking up a good amount of space and you want to get the point across of what they are. So then we'll block in some of these. And I like my lines to be really crisp when I use the black. Um, sketchy is good with you know, the pencil, but then you have the luxury of knowing where you're headed with the marker when you've already done the pencil down, so you can be more crisp with it. I will add some little lines in just to add a bit more depth into there as well. I'm going to go in and erase, erase just a little bit of these guide circles here just because I don't want to enclose the allium too much. I want them to kind of have that airy feel that is so beautiful about allium. And I'm gonna start with the brick is 
quite light in this one because it's a bit uh, washed out. But I still want that ready color in there. So it's a little hard to see when it's out of frame, isn't it? So I'm gonna just go in there and do a large sweep around all of the brick space. Um, and then personally, I love going kind of across my center folds in my sketchbook, but I know some people don't prefer to do that. But I like how it kind of incorporates the images, especially if I'm doing a couple, a couple different images. Oh, it just kind of combines it all and makes it look cohesive. And then while that dries slightly, I'll go in and do the allium here. And this is one of the things I love about watercolor is this sort of pooling and bleeding and stuff that happens when it dries because you don't really get that with other mediums and also because with the brick wall, you're looking at age and wear and tear anyway, so it kind of adds to the feeling of that. So while these last little bits are drying a little bit, I'm going to finish up some of these little allium up front. We'll go back into the brick and we'll add some... I kind of like uh, working with some of that wet area too because it just kind of does its own thing a little bit and so with this you know with these smaller ones you can kind of rely on the size of your brush to guide how big the bricks are going to be but with this um, the squares are a bit large to just use one sweep of your brush so you're gonna have to build them up a little bit And just follow with some of the lines that you've already put in there, some of the bricks that have already gone in with the line, line drawing. running out of water again. And with this, um, there does end up being a little bit more emphasis on the brick just because, you know, it's larger, it's a larger portion than over here. It's closer, so you're going to see a lot more detail with it. So just have some fun with layering things, letting them bleed together. I love that. Um, that part where they kind of bleed into each other like that. And this is all gonna, of course, look different once it dries, so just wait for that. And then we'll do another little layer kind of on top of all of this just to kind of add a little bit more definition, uh, some little darker bits. And of course use your judgment with this. Some of them will need you, know, you can kind of tell where some need to have that extra little bit or if it just feels like it's missing something slightly. And you'll be able to use your judgment. 
And we do end up getting a little bit of that kind of mortar in between because you have the lighter color in the background and then you're building it up. Um, so now I'm just fussing a little bit with this, but you can kind of stop at any point <laughs> along the way, which I should do that. So um, I'm going to leave the bricks for now and then I'm just going to go back into this allium. So that is basically it. Um, let's do a little, do a little caption there about what's going on. Let that dry a little bit. So something I do like to take a lot of the pencil away from is the words just because it can look a little confusing. And so there you have it. It's my uh, methods of doing brick in my travel journal. I hope that this was useful and that you guys got some new techniques out of it that you can use in your own travel journal or maybe just in your art practices in general even. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna continue doing different um, different tutorials. I might do something on how I do skies because I have a different technique for doing some clouds and stuff. Um, and I might do uh, some others, other ones as well. So if there's anything that you guys have noticed in my travel sketchbooks or in my art that I've done that you'd like some clarification or kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial type thing on then uh, please comment below and let me know and I will add that to my list of different tutorials that I create in the future so uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching I hope you have a good rest of the day and you get some art done if that's on your schedule and I will see you in my next video bye